Okay, yeah, two mana rift. Um, okay. Activate Sunforger. What do we got? Red Elemental Blast is in here, seems like a good one. Let's go with Red Elemental Blast. That's exactly why I put it in here, because when you're playing stronger decks, Cyclonic Rift is going to show up. Today on Commander Replay, we check out a high power game with the most hardcore Sunforger list that I could assemble. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some more hardcore Sunforger today with Kellen. Take a look at this opener, I'm pretty excited about it. We got Ancient Tomb, Smothering Tie, that's a lot of mana. Mural can protect us, this is control. A lot of things to like in this hand. Playline of Anticipation, fantastic. This is a open game of Magic Online that is high power. Oh god, there's an Ajila. That's disgusting. Shorakai is also very good. So much value. Oh, we're last? Oh no. Mystic Remora, of course. Brings it to our turn one. There's a Black Blade Reforged. Uh, play the Ancient Tomb. Play the Umazawa's Jite. Can't pay. Brainstorm for opponent into the Remora. Lovely. So Najila is just going to be loaded up with cards. Opponent's going to pay, of course. And then discard the hand size. I guess there's only one card, but Boros Charm down. That's what they got rid of. Oh my, what's in their hand? Second Mystic Remora, fantastic. If we can get the Smothering Tide down, we'll make a lot of mana. That'll be really cool. Sun Titan. Play the Erd Mesa, crack the Erd Mesa. Get Plateau. Cast Bright Boon. What's it? I can never remember it. Bright Right Boon. Two Remora's trigger, yep. Get Sunforger. No, stay in exile. And we'll pass like that next turn. Hopefully we can sneak that Smothering Tide through. If we can, that'll be a lot of nice mana. Wizard class for opponent. They've missed lands. Triggers both Remoras. Opponent's stuck on one land. They're going to be out of this game real quick. Remora lets it go. Plays land. Najila coming in. Who's this? This is Soromon, many colors. Esper and three, four, five, four. Ward, discard an enchantment, instant or sorcery card. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, each opponent mills two cards. Whenever one or more cards milled this way, exile, target, enchantment, instant, or sorcery. With equal or lesser value than that from the spell at opponent's graveyard, copy the exiled card. You may cast copy without paying its mana cost. Interesting. It's a lot of text. A lot, a lot of text. Opponent pays for the Remora. That's good news for us in that they tap their blue mana. Wayfarer's Bobble. Love that. Also, they're doing all this stuff at sorcery speed, forgetting that they have this in play. Yeah, they're missing their land drop too. Things are looking up. Sajiri Shelter. Be nice eventually. Uh, play the planes. Get the Smothering Tithe. Can't pay for the Remora. It lands. Just need it to stick for a couple turns. First trigger. Definitely can't pay. First treasure. Love that. Wow, opponent missed another land drop. They had no business keeping that hand. They kept one land brainstorm. There's a lesson for you. Don't keep one land brainstorm. Especially like, because now people don't run as many lands as they used to. When you run 38 lands, yeah, there's a pretty good chance you'll run into a couple. Uh, but now people run like 32 lands and expect to have any kind of success with one land brainstorm. I'm like, uh, the numbers aren't in your favor. There's a war leader's call. That's disgusting. That'll need to get taken care of eventually. Another treasure for us. Do like that. Najila on the attack. Where are they going? Our life will drop really quickly with this ancient tomb. And then Najila the plus the war leader's call. Hopefully not our way, but... Uh, Najila into us, token into the other player. What is this? Uh, Wara Soaring City. Okay, it's just a land. Cumulative upkeep. I imagine they let this go right here. Another treasure? Like that. Here's why I don't run Bobble. Because it's turn three, or it's turn four. They've missed the land drop. They're on three lands. If you miss a land drop early, Bobble is terrible. It It's only good if you make all of your land drops. Most of the time, I would rather just take a basic land over Bobble because a lot of the things I do care about basic land counts and it's literally just better for me to have like another planes in the deck for Ameria or Ameria Shepherd. Blasphemous Act. Do we need Blasphemous Act yet? I mean, uh, that's pretty expensive current state, so might just sit tight on that. Uh, we're going to try Mural, though, because this will shut off any counter spells. Plus, like next turn, we can just easily drop Sunforge or get it equipped and do all of that stuff without being interacted with, which sounds great. Mural lands. Let's play the Misfail Planes. Um, that opponent definitely can't pay for the Smothering Tithe, so yeah, we'll use some treasures right here to equip this thing, because then if they want to attack us with anything, we get counters on it, we can start shooting stuff. Plus, there's, light there's life gain on this too, which 
can also be helpful, may, may become relevant with this Ancient Tomb plus War Leader's Call. Smothering Tithe. Treasure for us, like that. They finally hit their second land, turn five, but they are in trouble. Ornithopter of Paradise, okay, I see what they were doing. That was probably in their opener, and they were probably trying to brainstorm for the second land to get to that. That is... It's, it's greedy, right? So the, the key to that is you have to know your land count, and if their land count is 32... You run that risk. Uh, importantly, we do have two mana up for the Sajiri Shelter, should we need it. Hoping to not use those treasures, though. Uh, we're almost at the critical eight mana for Sunforger. One more treasure will do it. There it is. So we have eight mana, which means we can cast and we can cast, equip, and activate Sunforger all in one turn, which will be really nice. Ooh, Derevi. Gross. That'll give opponent a lot more mana. Could be thinking about, like, maybe a Blasphemous Act with the Sajiri Shelter kind of situation also. I mean, I guess there's also, so if we activate Sunforger, get a Final Fortune, what happens? We then get another turn. We have that turn to cast the Angel's Grace. Our mana's a little dicey, but we could still probably get really far ahead. War Leader's Call, more tokens, yep. God, down to 24 already. Yep, make it one more, 23. Um, Sulfurous Blast also kills most of the things on the board. Doesn't kill Derevi. Sulfurous Blast plus shooting that would kill Derevi. Oh, or uh, Sulfurous Blast plus Umazawa's would kill Derevi. Okay, okay. I'm just going to untap a bunch of lands, though. Don't like that. Making a lot of mana, yeah. On the other hand, the other mm, the other thing we can do, yeah, we could just Sajiri Shelter Blasphemous Act also, and that'll probably be just easier to do. Uh, oh, opponent's going to do the extra... Uh-oh. Opponent has... Opponent's going to cast Divisions of Beyond. Does a... P opponent looks like they nearly have infinite combats. However, when they start coming in our direction, mm, they can go in the other players and just kill us with the War Leader's Call. That's a problem. Another treasure. It's gonna get tough from here, though. Oh! They... Nope, they're back at combat. Okay. Thought they messed it up. Opponent scoops. Yep. Uh, that actually does help, because now that opponent's gone, they... Oh, they miss it! They miss it. Nice. Okay. Okay, I think we're okay. Uh, there is a chance that they could have just won the game right there, though. They still have to deal with us. Like, every time they come in here, we get counters, and then eventually we can shoot the stuff. And that's good. Opponent accidentally skipped. Love it. Love that. They still, yeah, like, they still don't just have us dead. It was going to be close. I mean, real close, but... Smothering tie, continuing to trigger. Up to five treasures now. That's, that's good. Might be able to do this all on the first turn, which would be great. Opponent forgot to crack their bauble. <laughs> yep, that hurts. Brings it back to our turn. Total mana is ten. Enlightened Tutor could be very helpful in all of this. Cast a Sunforger. Equip a Sunforger. Okay, we're just going to go to combat over here. Swing into this opponent. Get some tokens. We need to be careful with our token usage. Uh, so we have exactly one equip on Sunforger. Okay, we want to be careful about that. I think we're playing Shijiri. No, we do need that to protect ourselves. Um, uh, What do we need? Activate the Sunforger. Yeah, let's Final Fortune. Uh, let's enlighten tutor. Mana Crypt might be good here. Let's make sure we have enough mana to keep doing stuff. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get a Mana Crypt. Is there no Mana Crypt in here? Mana Vault. Soul Ring it is. We get another turn. Cast a Soul Ring. Equip the Sun Forger. Go back to combat. Make more tokens. Get more stuff on the jet. Uh, activate the Sun Forger. Oh, I should have... No, we have a treasure up. Definitely gonna have to be the Angel's Grace. I think we just wipe the board with Blasphemous Act right here. Not really take chances with stuff. Because if they recast Najila, we can just shoot it the second it hits play. I guess we play the land now. And pass like that. So we have a lot more mana than opponent. And I feel like we just have better setup overall. Uh, giving this up does hurt. I really did want to have the um, the mana to be able to protect with Blasphemous Act. There is a line where just maybe going for Sulfurous Blast last turn is much safer. Because then it doesn't blow our thing up. Yeah, that may have been better, but... More treasure. Delighted Halfling. Uh, mana Dork. Talisman for opponent. Cracks the bauble, finally. Opponent giving us treasure. Uh, Soramon coming in. Okay. There's a land. Play the land. I'm gonna try the Sun Titan. Hope it sticks. There's the Sun Titan. Get the Arid Mesa. Uh, equip the Sun Forger. Uh, we'll sit tight with that for now. That should be plenty good. I forgot how much setup it really takes to get the Final Fortune combo going. Uh, that's a D-Spark, huh? Well, that being the case, let's activate Sunforger. Uh, risky play. So Teferi's Protection is probably good, but if we use Deflecting Swat, we can get rid of opponent's commander over here. Uh, yeah, let's hit the Sormon. Oh, it's got Ward. Well, yep, Teferi's might have been the right call then. Forgot about the Ward. Yep, they discard something. 
Or do they? No, they don't. Down it goes. Okay, that works. That works. Sunforger is unequipped, though, so we are open right here. Najila coming back. Yep. War Leader's Call, one damage. It's probably a lot of different things we could have done with the Enlightened Tutor, as I'm thinking about it. Feast and Famine might have been one of them. Actually, yeah, Feast and, yeah, Feast and Famine's probably a good one. Because then we can start getting weird with the Mistvale Plains and trying to loop the Sunforger. It does generally take more lands. That is the one issue with that combo, is you can't necessarily do it super quickly. Opponent pays for the trigger this time. Unfortunately, then, yeah. Yeah, we probably could have did things differently, because keeping Muriel, Muriel seems very strong. I am very nervous about what's going on over here. We could get blown out. That's an Aurelia. Start by trying to equip Sunforger. Feel a lot better once that's done. That is equipped. Did I put a Silence in the deck? This is not the deck. I don't know. I don't know if there's a Silence in the deck. It'll take too long to go find it. Let's see. Two, three, four, five, six. And still enough to activate. Love that. Cast an Aurelia. Um, we do need to crack this land. Uh, we might have to wait now. Ooh, opponent's got something. Uh, they're going to rewind the Aurelia. Okay, that's fine. Uh, while that's happening, let's... Crack the Arid Mesa. I don't really want to pay the life, so I am just going to get a Plains for a Sacred Foundry. Oh, crap. I should have looked at the deck list to see if Silence is in here. And we could counter that, I think. I think there's stuff in the deck to counter that, but I'm just not that worried about it in the moment. Sun Titan over here. See if we can just kill them. Getting back the Arid Mesa. They've got something. Our target player mills two, draw a card. Yeah, that's fine with me. That looks like digging for answers. Does trigger Smothering Tithe. Madden and Cacophony. Each opponent mills eight cards. If the spell is kicked, each opponent mills half their library instead. Okay. So it was a mill deck. Doesn't appear to be kicked. Forge news in the graveyard. That's great, because that, uh... Oh, we get a chance for Lori got milled. It's a little annoying, but... Oh, no! Sulfurous Blast! Uh, oh, Ravenous Trap. Exile target opponent's graveyard. That's not the best. Yeah, that's gonna hurt a little bit. I mean, we could counter that. I think it's okay, though. Opponent's gonna go out with a swing, they said. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, oh, we don't get our land. Disappointing. We did lose some stuff, though. Did lose some good stuff. Fighter class, Forge Anew. Uh, those are all really good. Chance for Glory is one of our combos. Sulfurous Blast I was going to be leaning on pretty heavily. Uh, luckily, we've got counters on the Jit. Opponent goes down to combat damage. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll just shoot the Najila right here before anything goes wrong. They will have a tough time recasting in their current mana situation. Najila down. And hey, we still got some Forger. Pass like that. Smothering Tithe. Opponent passing, they've only got, f no, they got five mana. I'm not sure if they have something or if they just have literal nothing. Wheel of Fortune. Uh, equip the Jit. Swing. They can block right here. I don't want to unequip the Sunforger. I don't feel safe enough to do that yet. Okay, yeah, two mana rift. Um, okay. Activate Sunforger. What do we got? Red Elemental Blast is in here. Seems like a good one. Let's go with Red Elemental Blast. That's exactly why I put it in here, because when you're playing stronger decks, Cyclonic Rift is going to show up. Ooh, opponent's going to Fierce Guardianship on that. Okay. Red Elemental Blast down. Sun Titan gets bounced. Time to get our commander, Kellen, coming in. We only have one white permanent, so we can't activate Miss Veil Plains yet. We'll want to get that taken care of real soon. Equip the Sun Forger. And pass like that. The mana does get easier if you have a free equip like Fervent Champion or Kazul's Warlord. Toll Collector? Toll Collector. Any of those type of effects, it does get much less mana efficient. In this case, Smothering Tithe is doing sort of the same thing in that it's just giving us a ton of mana but there are other ways to circumvent how much mana it actually takes to do all of this. We are running out of goodies for Sunforger. Usually the game's supposed to be over by now, so... Oh, that's a Beastmaster Ascension. That's okay. That's a ways from being good, because they still can't cast their commander. Brings it back to our turn. Hearth and Home is cool. Activate Sunforger, get rid of this blocker. I'm feeling good that we probably used up all of their removal. Silence is not in the deck. A Chroma's Will is, however, in the deck, which might be really good right here. Uh, Saver Bet right now, though, is just swords on the thing, just to see if they... Because if they'll try to shoot our commander when we re-equip, if they don't have anything then, then we can just win. Swords on the blocker. Uh, maybe there's a better way to do that. Uh, heroic Intervention, that's fine. Now they're tapped out. Okay, that is totally fine. Re-equip. Activate again. Get a Chroma's Will. Both modes. Uh, should hopefully, let's see, it's five to do that. Three, four, five. I think we're one short of doing both. Also five to do that. Yeah, let's get the Sunforger then. Get the Umazawas. Where we're at, we're at, we can be at eight power. Send it. Uh, pump up our commander. I don't know if that's going to be enough to actually be lethal though. It's going to be eight, then what, 12? 20? Oh, tell me we're at 20. Oh my god. Umazawas. Is there anything else in the deck that like pumps the damage up. <laughs> uh, so they go to 16. We gain a bunch of life back, which is critical. 
I mean, they're basically locked down. They can't cast their commander. They have, like, so many hoops to jump through before they can do that. Maybe this deck needs a paladin class just for the it's harder to cast stuff during your turn. They said they drew a tutor, and they're looking through their deck right now, and I told them, like, would it make you feel better if I told you I have Lapse of Certainty and Debolt Trickery ready to go? Uh, they say they have a mana drain. Their issue is they only have, what, six mana? So they're tight on mana, so that will always be their issue right here. Yeah, they scoop. <laughs> There it is, finally! Finally getting the game that I wanted to get with, there's the Tabolts, uh, with Hardcore Sunforger. That's not the decklist. Uh, that is another decklist that I'm working on. Here's the decklist. So yeah, Lapse of Certainty and Tabolts Trickery, both of which were still in the deck. Uh, we did lose a lot of things to that Exile, though. I was starting to get nervous about running out of stuff. Uh, so far this deck has performed really well. I think it's lost, like, once? I don't even have Mana Crypt in here, it would get better with Mana Crypt. Also Dockside, it would also get better with Dockside. Yeah, this deck is wild, feeling this. Oh yeah, and we did definitely take advantage of opponent's misclick, right? Like it was gonna be real close whether they were gonna get there with uh, Najila. Now the other thing is, right, we were last in the turn order. Imagine that we're ahead of them in the turn order. That all gets prevented and, you know, we have our turn and life is good. It was awkward in that they had like two creatures and then they went immediately to like five creatures. So that Blasphemous Act was a little rough at the time. And so, you know, there is all of that. Would love to get, like, a Volcanic Fallout in here. There's going to be that new board wipe coming soon that should be pretty good. But, yeah, this deck has performed well. This might be, like, my new high power deck going forward. I've been really enjoying this. It is, you know, it is prone to removal, and it does get messed up, which isn't the best. But once you get assembled, like, it's so hard for opponents to interact with you. And, like, to the point where it's not worth it, because it's like, all right, if they try a removal spell and you just counter it, right, it's not worth it at all to them. And, you know, they're better. So they're better off just holding it for something else. And that's ten that's how it tends to play. It's been pretty cool. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.